Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Argyle Way. Hope you're all having a very, very good day. Uh, let me just turn. Let me just turn down the TV because I don't want it to um, absolutely burst through the microphone, and I don't want that to happen, don't we? So it's not really the type of thing that we want to do, if, um, if, uh, if we're going to be honest here. But how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Argo Way. We haven't done one of these in a while, but we are here with the, um, the Argo News Show. Um, but obviously, I've renamed it now, but we're going to do some uh, Argo News stuff on the Argo Way. And don't worry, we will be bringing you the review for Huddersfield. We will be bringing that to you. So don't worry about that. It will be coming very, very soon. So... Um, and keep your eyes peeled because I think we possibly could be either be doing it tonight or we could be doing it tomorrow. I'm not sure, but 
just keep your eyes peeled for it. You don't, you don't want to you don't want to miss out on that. And it's going to be a very very good stream. So, yep. Um, but what is it today? Well, it is transfer day, and that is basically what has um, been going on um, here or down at Argyle. It's been absolutely mental wise transfers. It has been very very berserk um and let's get the banner on down there so because it's going to be a pretty long stream actually um but two signings have been announced today of course um the past couple of weeks the january transfer window has been um a bit of a negative one obviously we lost um we obviously lost luke kundal we lost finna zaz uh lewis warrington has gone i don't think we're really worried about him and obviously king kesler hayden has gone as well so that is four and gillespie so that is Five players leaving this January, and a lot of Argo fans are probably thinking, "How are we going to replace all of them? How are we going to how are we going to bring in new signings? We're not really a, a team that's that's really good at bringing in permanent players. We're usually a team that goes for loans. We're loan FC. Well, not anymore. Not anymore from the transfers that we that the transfer that we did bring in the other day, but the other the other three we have, but one." A new permanent signing and a Kane Kessler Hayden replacement. Um, I am very excited <laughs> to be um, to be going through this on this stream. Um, I don't know where Liam is. Uh, if he wants to jump on, that is absolutely fine by him. Um, but hopefully we can get more people on here. And um, if you want to hit the like button on the stream, that'd be absolutely great. And uh, share the stream around so you can get more people on the channel. You can get more people um, communicating with the streams and um, communicating with the videos um, by adding comments down below on uh, anything uh, Argo related. But they're on the fun now. And um, it is um, very, 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 very um, two good signings here. Um, first one being Matthew Sorinola from um oh, well as a free agent, but mainly um he left Union Saint Galois in Belgium. Um right wing back, basically you could say the King Kessler Hayden replacement. Oh, and Tyreek Wright has gone as well, forgot about him. And um basically King Kessler Hayden replacement, and it is a very, very good signing, um, if to say so the least. Um 22 years of age. He's got good potential. He has played. For, he has played in the championship before. He went on loan to Swansea for a year in the 2022-2023 season. Is it um, the signing that excites me? Yes, as he's still young. He's 22, and he's played in this league before, and he's had very, very good um, experience over at Belgium, which is um, another piece of the uh, uh, puzzle uh, that gets put together with uh, with that um, little bit there. We are going to go through. Um, Sodanola, first of all, because um, this signing excites me, really, really excites me, as um, Sodanola is one of them players where, Kane, well, Kane Kessler Hayden for the last couple of weeks, he was slowly, uh, dramatically losing his touch at Argo. I feel like he wasn't playing his best, he wasn't playing very well, and he wasn't getting, um, I don't think he was getting the game time that he was getting. Um, but um, it's. It's one of them where we we do need to bring another player that's replacing King Chris Hayden, of course. We had depth. We had depth in that position. But um, if I'm going to say right now, getting a permanent deal in um, with uh, Solanola is the perfect, perfect type of deal that we needed to do. And we got it absolutely perfect. We waited for the perfect time. And Ian Foster is picking out these players left, right and centre. It's been it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, we beat um, Southampton and uh, Preston to the uh, to the deal, which is very very surprising. I didn't did not expect that at all, and it's absolutely incredible that we're getting these types of players in at our goal. It's nuts. It's very very nuts that we're actually getting these players in. So, I um I honestly hope that these signing these signings that we're bringing in right now do settle in pretty quickly. Um, I do think they will settle in pretty quickly under um, Ian Foster. He knows what he's doing. He's, he knows what type of players he wants to bring in. And from what I'm seeing right now, it's um, it's proven to be um, very, very exciting times under our new gaffer, of course. Uh, but let's go through Matthew Soronola as um, we really do want to go through his previous stats um, at his previous clubs. That's really what um, we are interested about. Um, but 
here we are. Let's go through this. And obviously, we've got Twitter up as well, just in case. Paul Stoke. Yeah, Paul Stoke, indeed. Um, but here he is, Matthew Sorinola, 22 years of age, right wing back. Uh, yeah, his primary position, his right wing back. He doesn't play anywhere else. And, um, a, well, pretty 173 centimeters. I don't know how tall that is in uh, feet. If anybody wants to get it in the the, the live sec, the live comment section, that'd be great. Um, for that, for his height, which would be great. Um, but if you look at his previous clubs here, obviously he went through Fulham's youth, Fulham's youth academy, but then moved to NK Dons' his under 18s through 2017 to 2020. Then ended up becoming and then ended up going through their youth and playing for their main team, playing 46 times, scoring three goals. And then moving to Union Saint Galois in Belgium, where he was mainly getting game, where he was getting game pretty a um, little bit of game time over there and decent little ex experience over there as well. So not too shabby at all. Um, and then um, at, that didn't go well uh, down at Belgium. And then he moved back to England and went to Swansea for a year um, where he played 29, where he played 29 times, started 19, scored two goals and got three assists. Very, very good indeed. Um, but of course, um, he then ended up going back um, then did not end up getting any more minutes back at Union saint and he ended up leaving. Um, it's, it, well, well, Argyle really are basically like, hello, do you want to, do you want to try and um, revitalize your career again? Here's your offer. Here we go. That's basically what we're doing here. And it is a good, it is, it is a very, very good uh, deal uh, here from Argyle. We know what we're doing. Ian Foster knows what he's doing. Um, I don't know if we'll have any uh, backroom staff uh, left with um, obviously some other backroom staff leaving. I think Elliot Turner, if that's his name, uh, ended up, um, I think he's ended up leaving Argonne now. So we're going to not have, well, I don't think we'll have, end up having any staff left by the time this season is finished. But um, more on uh, Sorinola, anyways. We needed a right back. We needed more depth. Um, yeah, we did have enough depth in that position. Joe Edwards can play there. Um, Mikel Miller can play on the right, but he's more better on the left. And saying the Saxon early, he can play on the right, but he is so much better on the left. Um, it, it, it is one of them where I am very happy with this. And now it fully secures that right back position, right wing back position. And it is the top of player that in Foster needed. Kane Kessler Hayden, you could see from that game the other day, he did not play well at all. And I felt like his time at Argo was up from that uh, from that game 100%. And literally, the, uh, not even uh, literally not even a day after the game, he ends up going back to Aston Villa, and now it looks like he's going to go back to a, go to a different club. It's weird how quickly it happened, but it's but it's understandable um, why it has happened. We definitely um, Ian Foster definitely had a replacement under his sleeve, and that's who we got. Um, but stats wise, um, you go through league by league, league by league stats, of course. Through the, throughout the championship 2022-2023 season. Um, so, match stats, all leagues. Let's go through the championship, of course. So, he did end up playing quite a lot of, quite a lot of games for... So, he, ended, he did end up playing quite a lot of games for uh, Swansea, of course. Uh, one game, he did get an assist against Stoke. Lovely. Um, but going through all of these as well... Very, very good. 1.7 on XG. Um, and then stats through here. Three assists whilst he was there. Um, 451 successful passes. Pack ac passing accuracy, 78%. Accurate long balls, 18. Long ball accuracy, 40%. Chances created, 21. It is, um, we do need a player that uh, can create very, very good chances when we're on when we're on the front foot. Of course, Kane Kessler Hayden was doing that, but I don't think, um, I don't think he was the type of player that was, um, he was more of a sit back player in, and and break breakthrough player at the same time. I don't think Ken Kesler Hayden really uh, done well. He did do well at the start for our goal, but then around the, near the second half, of the, um, coming near the second half of the season and around the middle of the season, you could see that he was dropping off. And I don't think it ended up. Um, working in the end, but at the start, he did play very well, but he was eventually getting pushed out the team, and I don't think that is what, we, what he wanted. He wants guaranteed first-team football, and I think um, other players were eventually going to get above, um, above that list and um, over him, really. 
and is not um and is not good for um Genghis Aiden, of course, as he has now gone back to Aston Villa and searching for another team. Um, but for Sorinola, he's definitely gonna get game time at Argo. And if you could see from the stats here, it, it shows that um Ead is a very, very exciting player to be uh, looking forward to. Obviously, he has he's had 14 shots um in all of the games he's played. And he did end up scoring one, one against West Brom and one against Blackpool. So, and then 14, and then the other 12 shots going from around the other side of the area. Two goals, regular play, 12 shots from regular play, one from the corner. Yeah. And then Penoynty, uh, Penoynty, 24 successful passes, 40% ball, uh, long ball accuracy, chances created 1.12 uh, per 90, which is kind of interesting uh, for Right, right wing back for sure. I do think we need some coach, uh, some uh, coaching staff. There will be no bugger left. I agree with you, Mark, because there will be no fucker left at this rate. There will literally be no player left. How comes it's just you, mate? Because um, J oh, obviously Jack said that he's not um, he's not coming on any streams. He's taking a break from the Argo away for a bit. Harvey England, he's probably busy, and then Liam is probably um doing beaker type things. Only joking, but um. So there you go. I've got to say, by the way, I love you, Mitch. I love you. Oh, I guess someone's just messaged me. <laughs> um, but from and dispossess as well, 1.17, which is actually pretty low. Um, and then fouls won 1.81, touches in opposition box 2.98. That's quite a lot, speaking of it, for a right wing back. Touches 56.59 per 90. That's still quite, a, that's not bad. Dribble success, 42.1%. I don't think we're looking for a player that can dribble past players from as a right wing back. Mikkel Miller is good at doing that, of course. He is probably one of the fastest players I've seen at our goal, if I'm, um, if I'm saying so myself. Um, any other stats as well? Yellow cards, um, 0.32. And then he's had no red cards, no red cards, which is very, very good. For uh, 4.9 recoveries. So good recoveries. Tackles, 65.6%, which is very, very good as well for a right wing back as right wing back as well. Joe Edwards proves that in the uh, in the championship. He's been one of the um the best players at right wing back. Who's um Probably, he's probably got uh, the best success uh, successful tackle rate um in our team, I think, if I'm sure. Maybe. Um, maybe Ben, um, not Ben. Maybe Lewis Gibson is down that is down that road as well because he has been absolutely sensational for us this season. Coming um at centre back and what are obviously one of our other um, signings that we did get in the summer. He has been absolutely fantastic. Easily one of our players of the season. Um, so looking at uh, looking at Sorinola, I'm very excited with this and um, and it being a free transfer. We never usually <laughs> well. In the summer, we ended up getting two permanent transfers, and then we ended up getting another one in Bundu. But another one in January is a very big surprise. But Sorinola being a very, very good one, as he played uh, very well for Swansea last season, and it's just showing that we can bring in good talents. We can bring in good talents, but it's just the money that lets us down. And when you work on a tight budget. This is what this is the type of place you're gonna to have to go for. So it's it's it is gonna be a struggle, but what can you do? I think we need a goalkeeper. I don't think we need a goalkeeper at this moment in time. I think we are fine. We have got Callum Burton still as a um, a backup. And obviously Connor Hazard, yes, a lot of people are criticizing him, but you've got to um we've got to um deal with him uh, as our goalkeeper. <sighs> Excuse me. As our goalkeeper for now, so can't really do anything about that. Um but our next player that we will want to go um, go and talk about, um, let's get him up, is this man, Alfie Devine. Right. It's a surprise that he has come in. Obviously, him being at um, Port Vale for the first half of the season. Of course, it still pops up there that he's at Port Vale. He's not. Oh, don't worry. He's at Argo now. Uh, confirmed on Twitter. But I'm very excited by this player. And one reason why a lot of people have been um, calling him the, um, a, new, um, a very good upcoming Wonder Kid, and a Wonder Kid, Wonder Kid description Wonder Kid comes up very, very rarely, and 
And if you if you see a lot in this player, then there's a lot for you to be excited about when you when you um get um when you get mentioned by this player. Alfie Devine, very good attacking midfielder, two goals and one assist in uh, League One, uh, in a um, and I'd say a pretty all right uh, Port Vale side. They have they have um, held themselves out during um, during then, um, but coming coming to an Argos side, you know that he is going to be the second half of the season replacement for Finn Azaz, no doubt about it. Uh, Finn Azaz was absolutely phenomenal for us for the first half of the season, and it's going to be hard to say um, to see another player replace him. But I feel like we've done very well with Alfie Devine, five foot five foot ten, nineteen years of age. Yeah, don't get put off by the don't get put off by the age. Uh, he is a very young player. Um, he is a very very good player, um, but nineteen years of age. Everyone's probably thinking, oh. It's a little, it's a little uh, crazy that we're going to go in for a 19-year-old and we're going to be relying on this guy for most of the uh, for most of the season. If I'm going to say right now, if I'm going to say right now, um, I'm not, I'm not going to be put off by it at all. I'm not going to be put off by it at all. I'm very, very excited to um, uh, for this for Alfie Devine to come in. I. <laughs> And I'm a top of person that likes to play football manager, so do not uh, talk to me about anything else about that. Um, and of course, one um, one the kid, Alfie Devine. How will he? How will he do at Argo? And how did he do at Port Vale? Well, looking at the stats, average ratings in the last goodness how many games now? He's played. He, he played against Middlesbrough. They lost three 0 in that game. Um, Played well against Wigan and in the FA Cup. They played against Stevenage. He got an assist in that game. Blackpool played for, played pretty well. Carlisle, Charlton. Um, but some results are were coming their way. Some results are not, which is not um not what they want. But for uh, for our most of the season though, um, if you look through here, um, he did end up scoring in the Carabao Cup. Um, against Mansfield, and then against Cheltenham, he did end up scoring in the two-one loss. Um, and then is there any other games that we could possibly look at here? No, nope, no other games at all. But a good attacking midfielder with a very, a uh, very, very, very high potential, and he did win the UEFA Under 19 Championship with guess the name Ian Foster. So he de- he clearly knows who he is bringing into um, this club. Um, goals 2, expected goals 2.09 XG um, and 3.07 um, XG on target ratio. Um, goals on target ratio, non penalty XG. Shots, 29. Shots on target, 12. Passing, successful passes, 547. That is a lot. And 82.3% Pass accuracy that is very very good. Accurate passes, accurate um, long ball accuracy sixty three point five percent, and accurate long balls forty seven. Um, I did, and some of the highlights looked very very exciting as well from what I saw. Chances created twenty two, long ball accuracy yeah, look, I've seen that. Successful crosses six, cross accuracy sixteen point two percent. So decent decent team. Um, decent decent uh, player looking at the stats. We are building a strong team. The only way forward, exactly, Andrew. We are playing out of position at Port Vale, so his stats is misleading. That is also true. I feel like um, the type of position he does like to play in is attacking midfielder. Okay, and um, <laughs> just uh, just had um, some people um, <laughs> arrive, um, so I won't be on for a l- little much longer. But the stats do look very, very. They do look kind of misleading. But he did play in a wrong position. But attacking midfielder, I feel like he'll do very, very well as an attacking midfielder for us. For sure, and he'll be the finish as replacement for us. Um, on possession, then successful dribbles eight, dribble success 57.1, touches 862 touches. That is quite a lot of touches, quite a lot of touches to say the least. Touches in opposition box 32, dispossessed 13 times, fouls 111. And obviously, we don't really want to look at um, some, some of them you do want to look at defending wise. Finazaz was type of player that did like to win the ball back quite a lot, um, and run and um, take the man on. Tackles one ten, sixty two point five tackles one. Jules Jules one forty five. 
and then Jules one percentage forty eight point four percent. Very very exciting, ain't it though? Uh, chat very very exciting. Did you want me to come on? Um, do you know what Craig? Do you know what Craig? You can come on. You can come on because I do want you to have your thoughts on um this uh, these signings and um you can happily come on. Um, let me put it in the chat because um. Let me put it in the chat. There you go, and uh, I will end up. I will end up deleting it. I will end up deleting it in a minute because um, I don't want other people randomly just jumping into the stream. So, there you go. Uh, let's just um, go to the YouTube stream. Let's. Oh, for God's sake, Echo! There we go. Yes, got it, got it, got it. And hopefully, you do end up getting um, getting that link. Um, so, but if anybody else wants to jump on and talk about it, we could get random um, guests on. So it's not really a problem at all. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Eh? Absolutely fantastic. But let's get back to this. This is what we wanted. To, um, this is what we wanted to look at, ain't it? So, um, red and then red cards none, yellow cards three. Dribble pass nine times. Possession one. Final third three. Recovery, 62. That's quite a lot. Blocked, 8. Interceptions, 4. Uh, but when you do look at the uh, attacking stats and the possession stats, that excites me a lot. That really does excite me a lot. And from what I've heard, playing in the wrong position. Um, don't know. It's it's one of them. It is one of them. I don't know what I'm ma mainly how to feel about this. So... If we're going to say so the least, get ready for some good attacking midfielding prowess in the team because it's going to be a very, very exciting time um, with our new attacking midfielder in the building. And we needed a new attacking midfielder because we had... Um, obviously, I'm not going to say anything bad about Callum Wright, but I don't think Callum Wright is the type of player you would want to have in an attacking midfielder role. It's not going to work, and I don't think it was ever going to work. So there you go. So there you go. That is that in a nutshell. Um, need to, need to make the oh yeah. Um, so I just had a comment from someone saying needs a new haircut though. Yeah, Sorinola need definitely needs a new haircut. <laughs> um, do you think Divine more of a Cundle type player than more than a Finazaz type? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so, Marcus. I feel like he's definitely more as a type of a player that likes to play in a more attacking role instead of more of a further back, more in central midfield. I feel like he wants to get more involved in the attack and be the, play, play the player to be the main playmaker and create the opportunities on the final third. I feel like that's probably what he wants to mainly be. And in at Port Vale, we'll look at one of the previous games he played in. The final game he played in was against Reading. And if you look at the lineup, he's playing in a centre midfield role. I don't think he would want to play in a centre midfield role. That's not the type of role he wants to play in. He wants to play more attacking and get more involved in the final third. So that's mainly um, what you want to um, put into context. <clears throat> let me just um let me just message someone quick because um <sighs> come on it's just not doing it for me <laughs> oh for god's sakes but ho um, hopefully everyone is enjoying the stream and we will be on for a little bit longer because we may end up having a guest on so um <sighs> Let, let me do that. Come on. All right, so hopefully he sees that. <clears throat> Azaz Mark 2. Azaz Mark 2, yeah. <laughs> Azaz Mark 2, indeed. Um... It's going to be very, very um, exciting to see a new player in uh, like um, Alfie Devine come in with the type of um, the type of ability that he's got. So I just hope that 
he's basically more of an Azaz type than he is a Kundal type, if you um, get what I mean. Because I don't really want another player that likes to sit more deep in a central midfielder role. I want a new attack midfielder to be more involved in the final third and create most of our chances in uh, the games that's coming up. That's what I want. And hopefully we do get that. Um, going through the previous games, though, when you look at the Huddersfield game, I'm going to go through that. I'm just looking at the Huddersfield. I'm just looking at the lineup against Huddersfield as well. We basically played a three-four-three in that second half. Um, we did basically play a four, uh, a three-four-three in that second half. But what let us down is um, we should never have switched to that formation in the second half. The first half we played in a we played in a three-four-one-two formation, and it worked a ch- and it worked as a charm. It was an absolute brilliant decision from Ian Foster to go 3-4-1-2 as we had a lot of attacking options up front and we caused a lot more problems to Huddersfield's defence and really pressured them down. So that's the um, that's the main thing there on why I feel we need to play more with a 3-4-1-2 because we have more better options up forward. Or would they result more going to go to play a striker though? Hmm. I think divine potential is more than Azaz because Villa wouldn't have sold Azaz for only 2.5 mil and Azaz was never called a wonder kid. Yeah, but I don't really... And the thing is, I don't really like to uh, mention the the, the word wonder kid a lot because some players do get get mentioned as being a wonder kid. But I am kind of excited. Uh, When you do hear the word wonder kid, it does kind of excite you. But how much of a wonder kid is he? Can he really bring what we need? Only time will tell, really. Only time will tell. And we will see how he gets on in the next couple of games. Will he be fit for the next game as well? So we'll see how that um, how that ends up um, planning out anyways. I don't know if Craig will be jumping on. I don't know because I haven't had any I haven't had any mention. Um, I haven't had any, any mention from him. So we'll see what happens anyways. <clears throat> but I might call here because um um got things to do and um and I've got to go and have a um, tea. So there you go. <laughs> but thank you all very much for jumping onto the stream. Hope you all enjoyed. Um two new signings through the door. Sar- Sorinola and Alfie Devine. Lovely stuff. And we've already brought in two more other players as well earlier in the other week. Um Darko Giabi. And Ashley Phillips. So that's four this January. Many more to come. This is getting exciting. We'll see you next time. And we'll catch you in the next stream on the Argyle Way, which will be the review for the Huddersfield game. Have a good have a good rest of your day, everyone. And goodbye.